Hey guys, what's up, Mad Season here, back with a new series for you. I've been wanting to cover how to get every mount to the game, but since it's such a daunting task, I've kind of been putting it off. I figured if we do it expansion by expansion though, and turn it into a mini-series, it'll be more feasible. We're starting with Legion here, because it's the most recent finished one, so probably the one where a lot of you need mounts still, thus hopefully the most useful. There are 121 in total, 114 of which are still obtainable. There are some that have been taken out of the game, so those are gone forever unless they just decide to put them in the black market auction house, which they do every now and then. I'll still mention them for completion's sake, but I'll save them for the end. Before we begin, I do want to say that I am human, and I'm just one guy. I've been building this list for weeks, and I think it's a complete list. But just in case I make an error or I miss something, make sure that you check out my pinned comment for any corrections. It's kind of a tricky thing to categorize. The way I'll try to split them up will be from one expansion's launch to the next, so this includes the big pre-patch as well. For example, Legion will be from its launch on August 30th, 2016, and up to and including the 8.0.1 pre-patch for the Battle for Azeroth. I'll try my best, but there are still some tricky ones, like the Conqueror Scythema for example. This was released in the BFA pre-patch, but it requires BFA achievements, so even though it should be included in this list, I'll save it for a BFA video just because it makes more sense to me. There's also the Illidari Fellstalker, which is the Legion Deluxe Edition bonus, but that was available during Draenor still in patch 6.2. So technically, that should be in the Draenor video, but it just feels wrong to have it in anything other than Legion. And one last thing here before I begin is I want to give special thanks to my friend Maver for both helping me make this list and also letting me get footage for a lot of these mounts. I don't have footage for most of these myself, but he's the mount master in this game. He can mount nearly everything with the exception of his wife because he plays too much World of Warcraft trying to collect all of them. But that's another story, so please thank him for a sacrifice. Anyways, let's get into it here. I'm splitting these up in the following categories, and I'll have them all listed in the pinned comment and description with appropriate timestamps. So if you're looking for information on specific ones, make sure you check that out. In this part, we'll cover the ones from dungeons and raids, professions and reputations, and we'll save the other categories for the next part. Starting with dungeons and raids here first, we do have our fair share of meta achievements for Legion. Starting with the Layfeather Hippogriff from the Dungeon Hero. This is a meta achievement spread across every Legion dungeon, excluding Karazhan and the Seat of the Triumvirate. There are 26 total required, and even though it's of the Legion Hero, they actually require you to be in Mythic mode. I've actually been working on this one myself, and I should have a video guide up for it pretty soon here. And next up, we have the Grove Defiler. Same deal here, except this is tied to the Emerald Nightmare and Nighthold raids. The Emerald Nightmare can be found right here in Valshara, and the Nighthold is located in Suramar City in Suramar. Since it's shared between two raids, you have quite the laundry list here. 17 achievements total to get, with 7 from the Nightmare and 10 from the Nighthold. And lastly, for meta achievements, we have the Antorin Gloomhound. This time, it's the final raid of Legion, which is Antorus the Burning Throne. A little more daunting here due to the increased difficulty, but less so in the number of achievements, which is just 11 total. You can find the raid itself right here in the Antorin Wastes on Argus. Moving on to drops here though, next up we have the Felblaze Infernal and the Hellfire Infernal. These both drop off of the final boss in the Nighthold raid, which is Gul'dan. Note that near the entrance, you can get a quest to skip right to Alessand, who directly precedes him. So whatever difficulty you're doing, make sure you grab that to save some time. The Felblaze Infernal drops from normal difficulty or higher, while its red counterpart, the Hellfire Infernal, drops from mythic mode only. People are saying that the drop rate for both is quite low. Possibly as rare as the Pandaria world boss mounts, which is like a 0.1% rate. And something I'll just throw out here is that the bonus rolls don't work with any of these mounts that are drops. 
And it's not just Legion. Pretty much every mount drop in dungeons, raids, or whatever aren't on the loot table for bonus rolls. The only exception would be those Pandaria world bosses. Although the Tomb of Sargeras meta achievement only gives you a title, one mount can still be found within it. It's called the Abyss Worm, and it drops from the Mistress Sazine boss on every difficulty, including LFR, at a 1% drop rate. Note that in patch 8.1, Blizzard will be adding an NPC that lets you queue up for any LFR raid in Legion. He's not in the live game as of this video, but you'll be able to find him right here in the Broken Isles Dalaran. Next is the Antorn Charhound, the fiery brother of the Antorn Gloomhound. This one can also be obtained through the Antorus raid, but this time it's just a straight up drop off of the Fellhounds of Sargeras, which is conveniently the second boss of the raid. Just like the Abyss Worm, it can be looted in any difficulty, including LFR, and just like the Abyss Worm, it's a 1% drop rate. And the last raid drop we have is the Shackled Urzul. This one is from the final boss of the Antorus raid. Spoiler alert, it's Argus. And this one is Mythic, so pretty rough still as of the Battle for Azeroth expansion. 1% is a speculated drop rate, although that's not confirmed. And just like the Nighthold, make sure that you take advantage of the quest near the entrance that lets you skip to the final two bosses once completed. We do have a few dungeon mounts as well. Two are from the Karazhan Mega Dungeon that was released in patch 7.1. Let's cover the simple one first, and that's Midnight. This is a drop from the Atuman the Huntsman boss on Mythic difficulty at only a 1% drop rate. We also have the Smoldering Emberworm, which is more complicated. To sum it up, once you enter, you have a limited amount of time to click a bunch of crystals, and then go to the ramparts to summon Nightbane as a boss, and once you kill him, he has a chance to drop the Smoldering Emberworm mount. For the sake of trying to keep this video under 40 minutes, I'll just have a link to a separate guide in the description, so check that out if you need it. One thing I will say here though, is that there's a funny story going on with the drop rate. It has a 20% chance to drop per person who's not loot locked, meaning those who haven't killed Nightbane that week. So, if you're solo, it's just a 20% chance. If you have 3 people, it's 60%. And with 5, there's a 100% chance that 1 will drop. Just thought I'd mention that, since it's a bit of an anomaly. And lastly, we have Yulai, the daughter of Jade. This is a time walking mount, specifically from Pandaria. I think this fits in the dungeon section since Pandaria time walking was added in Legion. Every Pandaria time walking event, you can visit the Timeless Isle in Pandaria to find a vendor right here on the map. You can buy Yulai for 5,000 time walking badges, which you get from looting bosses within time walking dungeons and more so from a once per event quest turn in, which you loot off the final boss and turn into the vendor for 500 badges. Next up, we have all of the profession mounts. Five in total for Legion. First, we have the Spirit of Eshero, which is tied to archeology. span Legion has a handful of archeology span quests that give various rewards, toys, pets, an heirloom, and this mount. You get these quests from Darinus the Learned in the archaeology shop right here in Dalaran. The catch is, is that they cycle every two weeks, so you'll have to keep checking back if you're looking for a specific one. Luckily, you only need to be level 110 to get this quest. No archaeology skill is required, aside from just learning it as the base profession. The one that leads to this mount is called the Right Path. You get sent to High Mountain, and you have to go around gathering bone fragments from dig sites. It's pretty straightforward. Really, the only tough part is waiting for the quest to pop up. So here's a list of every upcoming date for the next 9 years. The next one, at the time that this video was made, is from the 13th of February of 2019 to the 27th, so set yourself a reminder to take a couple hours to snake this mount. Next, we have the Great Northern Elderhorn. You get this from the Leatherworking Profession in Legion. Head on over to the Leatherworking Shop right here in the Broken Isles Dalaran to start a lengthy quest chain. You travel across the world, visit dungeons, and at the end of it, you'll get the recipe to craft this mount. Again, to save time, I'll just have a link to the chain in the description. Also, although it requires 100 Legion Leatherworking to learn, 
It's said that it can be used on all of your characters when you do learn it, even if they don't have leather working. I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but there you go. Next, we have the Brine Deep Bottom Feeder. This is of course an aquatic only mount, and you get it from the fishing profession. On this little island floating next to Dalaran, you can find an NPC called the Conjurer Margas. He sells you this mount at the best friend reputation level for 100 of an item called Drowned Mana. You use the same currency to level his reputation, and you sometimes get it by fishing in the nearby pond. This is best done in a group because there's a chance to also loot an item called the Mark of Aquos, which when used, it summons an elemental for you to kill. Once it's dead, every cast results in a drowned mana, so the more people you have, the higher uptime you'll have on this buff. So make sure that you check the group finder because sometimes you can find other people farming and helping each other out. Next up, we have the Pond Nettle. Another one from fishing here. Much more straightforward this time though. You simply fish this one up in the Antorn Waste Zone on Argus. No specific spot, just anywhere in the green slime found everywhere in the zone. People have reported getting it with a relatively low fishing skill, so don't worry if you're just starting out. It is a pretty low drop rate, believed to be around 0.1%, which is one in every thousand casts. And lastly for profession mounts, we have the Steelbound Devourer, which you get from blacksmithing. The recipe for this has a chance to drop from the Tychondrius fight in Nighthold on any difficulty except LFR. The drop rate on Wowhead is about 1%, but you can't trust that because that counts data from non-blacksmiths. It should be much higher than that. Definitely not 100% though, so expect it to take a few tries. Note though that you can do normal, heroic, and mythic all in one week, and there are people running them in your group finder all the time, so make sure that you take advantage of that. You do need to have 100 skill points in Legion Blacksmithing to learn the recipe. The mount isn't bind on pickup though, so you can just buy it off of the auction house if you want. As of this video, it's going for around 40,000 gold. And also note that you don't need blacksmithing to learn the actual mount. Next up, I'd like to cover reputation mounts, of which there are plenty. There are six base reputations that came out with Legion, and that's the Wardens and the Court of Ferrandis of Asuna, the Dreamweavers of Al Shira, the High Mountain Tribe of High Mountain, the Valor Jar of Stormheim, and the Nightfallen of Suramar. All of these, with the exception of the Wardens, have a mount tied to their Paragon caches. Basically, these are bonus caches that you get after every 10,000 reputation past exalted for these factions. They wanted to give some long-term rewards to rep grinding to give people more incentive to keep doing the world quests and whatnot. We have the Cloudwing Hippogriff from the Court of Ferrandis, the Wild Dream Runner from the Dreamweavers, the High Mountain Elderhorn from the High Mountain Tribe, the Valorjar Stormwing from the Valorjar, and the Laywoven Flying Carpet from the Nightfallen. You get reputation for all of these reps from story quests, and more abundantly from world quests and emissary quests held within their respective zones. To save time, I'll just have a link in the description that shows you all the different ways that you can grind reputation for them. The drop rate varies from 3% to 12% for each one, so call it a 7-ish chance to drop per cache. So this will be a long-term grind for sure, unless you just have luck of the gods. And similarly on Argus, there are three more mounts to be found from the Army of the Light faction. Same deal here basically. You level this reputation through story, world, and emissary quests. There are also weekly quests to be found on your home ship. We have the Glorious, the Blessed, and the Avenging Fell Crushers. These are around a 5% drop rate it looks like, so another long-term thing to grind out here. Unless you're like my friend, and you get two of them for one single cash, as well as a legendary and a toy. And since you're grinding reputation for these guys anyway, you may as well grab the Lightforged Warframe. You can get this from the same NPC who hands you the Paragon caches at Exalted level. It does come with a hefty price tag of 500,000 gold though, so you better start saving up now. The other reputation for Argus is the Argusian Reach, and although they don't have any Paragon cash mounts, they do have a bunch at the Exalted level. 
six total, and I hope you like Talbucks, because they're all basically recolors of each other. We have the Sable, Russet, Amethyst, and the Barrel, Umber, and Cerulean Rune Striders. They cost 8,000 gold each at Exalted, so that's 48,000 total, which isn't too bad compared to the Warframe. I should also mention the Allied Race mounts, since those are also unlocked with Reputation. For the Alliance, if you reach Exalted with the Argusian Reach faction, and also complete the You Are Now Prepared achievement, which is just completing all of the Argus story quests, you can do a quest line to unlock Void Elves as an Allied Race. And once you complete it, you also get the Star Cursed Void Strider as a mount, usable by any character on the Alliance. The same goes with the Lightforged Draenei. You need Exalted with the Army of the Light, the same You Are Now Prepared achievement, and once you complete that chain, you get the Lightforged Fellcrusher. For the Horde, you have the Nightborn, which requires Exalted with Nightfallen, and the Insurrection achievement, which similarly to the other ones, is just the Suramar story quests. They give you the Nightborn Mana Saber on Horde characters only. And for the High Mountain Torn, you need Exalted with the High Mountain Tribe, and the Ain't No Mountain High Enough Achievement, which is for the High Mountain Story Quests. They give you the High Mountain Thunderhoof. You start these quest chains at your Emissary Building, located at your faction's main capital. For the Alliance, it's right here in Stormwind, and for the Horde, it's right here in Orgrimmar. I guess since we're talking about reputations anyways, I should also mention the 100 Exalted Reputation Achievement Mount, since this was added in Legion as well. It's called the Pure Heart Courser, and if 100 seems a bit daunting to you, keep in mind that it is being made easier in an upcoming BFA patch. They're making it so this shares progress across all of your characters, as long as the reputations are unique. So, for example, if you have 40 reputations on one character, and 20 different ones on an alt, right now it just takes your max, which is 40, but in the next patch, that'll go up to 60 in this example, so a lot of you are actually going to get this upon logging into 8.1. And lastly for reputations, we have the Ivory Hawk Strider, which is tied to the Talents Vengeance faction. This one is kind of complicated. First, I guess we should talk about the Falcasaurs, since they lead to this faction. Basically, there are four different Falcasaur mounts that you can get. Every now and then, there will be these Falcasaur world quests that spawn. One in Asuna, called the Bloodgazer Swarm, Another in Valshara called the Sharp Talon Swarm, one more in Stormheim called the Direbeak Swarm, and lastly one in High Mountain called the Snowfeather Swarm. When these are up, if you kill a Matriarch Falcasar in the area, you'll be able to find one of these little hatchlings that she can interact with. Here are the coordinates for each zone. If you go to these, and you give the hatchlings certain food items, you can sort of adopt them as a pet, and when you summon them, they'll give you a quest chain that gives you these mounts upon completion. Each of these food items can be bought from most inns in this expansion, so just pay a visit to Dalaran before heading out. The quest chain itself involves leveling them to 25, visiting capital cities, completing world quests with the Falcasaur out, and even defeating raid bosses. So it takes quite a while. Normally, you can do just one quest a day, but if you have any level 110 plus alts, you can also just summon the pet on them to do the next part right away. So that's the basic gist of things. Again, for the sake of trying to keep this video at a reasonable length, I did leave out some details. So to cover my butt, check the description for a fully detailed guide if you get stuck or my directions are bad. So, four mounts at the end of four long quest chains. If you do the Snow Feather chain, you get the Snow Feather Hunter, the Predatory Bloodgazer from the Bloodgazer Hatchling, the Viridian Sharp Talon from the Sharp Talon chain, and lastly, the Brilliant Direbeak from the Direbeak chain. Pretty simple. But as I mentioned, after completing your first chain, you'll get access to the Talon's Vengeance reputation, which also holds a mount. Pay a visit to Aviana at the Sylvan Falls in High Mountain, right here on the map, and if you talk to her, she'll give you an item called the Ivory Talon. Using this gives you a buff, and flags you for PvP in all Falcosaur and PvP world quest areas, and killing enemy players gives you an item called a Mark of Prey. Note that this makes you attackable by any player, not just the opposite faction. 
If you turn these in at Aviana Shrine, you get 100 reputation with the faction. So this will take a lot of PvP kills to get all the way to Exalted, which gives you the mount. It's the Ivory Hawk Strider, and it's 8,000 gold with that Exalted discount. Not counting any reputation bonuses, it'll take 420 marks total to reach Exalted from the start. The Marks of Prey don't disappear though, so I recommend that you just hold on to them until the Darkmoon Fair is in town, so you can ride the carousel to get that 10% reputation buff. This way, you can get there with just 378 turn ends. So quite the tough one to obtain since you need other people. Once you reach Honored though, you can get the Ivory Feather, which is usable in Battlegrounds. So make sure you take advantage of that. Although you do only get marks from killing blows, so also make sure that you're in a DPS spec. Also, there's a similar thing going on with the Pandaria expansion. This also leads to a mount, so I thought I'd mention it here as well, even though it really doesn't belong in this video. On the Timeless Isle right here, you can find an NPC that sells you the Firewatcher's Oath for 100 Timeless Coins. This gives you another item called Bloody Coins upon kills, and you need 500 of these for the Ashhide Mushin Beast. This buff does work with the Talon's Vengeance buffs, so if you grind one out, you may as well knock out two birds with one stone here. Again, if you want more details, I'll have links in the description. Alright, that's pretty good for part 1 here. I'll get back to this as soon as I can. We got quite a lot to go, so it could even be a 3 part series. Hopefully I can keep it to just 2 videos, but we'll see. Before I sign off here, I'd like to give a special thanks to a friend who made that new intro that you saw earlier, and also an outro, which you're about to see. I've been meaning to update those, but I just haven't had the time nor the creativity, so this worked out really well. If you noticed, it's similar to the actual World of Warcraft expansion frames that you see in all of the cinematics, so I'm really happy with it, and hope you are too. If you like it, you should check out his website where he has more of his work, and also some music. I'll have it linked in the description. So, shoutouts to Henrik. Thanks again, dude. I really appreciate you going out of your way for me. Anyways, I hope you found the video helpful. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next part if you did. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.